Um, well, again, every pro, every tournament's a, a little bit different, and it, I, probably what we, we learned again is that the difference by with playing in Asia as opposed to playing in the World Cup. You know, for most of our preparation this year, we played against teams that were, were non-Asian teams, and it's a slightly different style of football against those teams. Uh, coming into the, the Olympic qualifiers, obviously we're back playing in, in Asia and playing against the top Asian teams, and you need a slightly different some slightly different tactics, slightly different style of football and it probably you know, took us a couple of games to get back into that swing again and unfortunately those were a couple of critical games. When we look back at the World Cup, in the last game we had a fully fit and healthy squad. When um, we look at this, this uh, tournament there were large periods where we had you know, four, five, six players who weren't 100% fit. So we're a bit like the walking wounded and that obviously doesn't help when you're trying to, to win a tournament and trying to qualify for the Olympics. But I thought uh, you know, a lot of players who probably would have been considered fringe players or squad players really stepped up to the mark. You know, uh, Lydia Williams got uh, an opportunity in goal and was outstanding. Laura Alloway played you know, three very significant games. Ivy Louie and, and Emily Van Eggman in, in midfield were, were outstanding. So you know, there were some really positive performances. I don't know, we need to go back to the, the drawing board and, and sit down and, and, and plan for the future. I think the key thing is that with a national team it's very important that we don't lose momentum. You know, you have good tournaments, you have bad tournaments, you have successes and disappointments. You know, if you look at the Olympics next year, you know, Germany won't be there. There'll be some other significant countries not there. So the key thing for us now is to actually put a real uh, concrete plan in place to look forward to, you know, the 2012 or 13 of the 2015 Model Cup and really start to look at planning for that. You know, we've got some very talented players coming through and, you know, I've said that I think on numerous occasions that we're very fortunate that we've got quality coaches in our system who not just um, develop the players but we also identify the type of players that we want to develop. And I think if you look at this young team training here, you see that we've got really good talent for the future and players who are, you know, already on the fringe of being so you know, full Matildas. Ah, oh, I don't know, I, don't, I may get retired, I'm not sure about that. You know, I've still got a contract for, for a year and a bit to go. Um, and it's always difficult to know what you're doing in coaching. You know, um, I don't know if the Football Federation and the AIS want to go in a different direction. Uh, so really, at the moment, these are all the things that need to be considered. Yeah, I, I'm looking for its continual improvement, it can, its continual competitiveness, and, and I think teams are getting better. They're getting better organised. They, they know the opposition better. They're recruiting better. So again, we're looking at again the standards improving from from last year, which was outstanding. And from my perspective, obviously looking at some players to really burst through and, and sort of you know sort of stamp their authority in the league, and from there hopefully get opportunities in the national team. Uh, there's no such thing as a break, you know, we've got the under 20s off to Vietnam, then we've got the 17s who are off to, to China in November and the W League starting, so it still keeps, keeps me fairly busy.